Okay. Oh, uh, let me just remind people. Um, Alonzo is supposed to do the written evaluation, and Elisa is supposed to do the oral evaluation. Okay, so when you think of like high school bands or middle school bands, most people think of like a bunch of like loser kids trying to make noises on instruments. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of the stereotype that you get with you know band geeks or like you know loser kids, but. <laughs> that's, not, that's not necessarily true. I mean, I went through band all four years of high school. I mean, I'm still kind of a band geek. But <laughs> there's a strong like correlation between people who do music and people who have good success in their life. And so today, I'm going to talk to you about how we should uh, boost the funds for music education in public schools. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take you through three points. I'm going to first uh, start with uh, how music is considered unimportant in schools now. And secondly, I'm going to go why it's beneficial and why we should have it in our schools. And thirdly, how to get more funds into the high schools. All right. So music today isn't necessarily considered important in schools. It's actually considered to be the least important thing in regards to education. Um, David Beach, an artist in the collective FREEE, -E -E, says that the arts and humanities have been identified as the lowest economic form of higher education in the uh, public schools. So it's, that shows how much like people actually care about music, is that they don't even want to give any money to it because it's considered to be taking away from actual education and away from like math and English and stuff like that. Um, when people get cuts in their like budget, the first thing to go in every public school is the music program, which it, it's it, it's not good because it shows that um, when people need to just get rid of something, they say, oh, just cut it away from the band. They don't need it. As they're good enough right now, but that's not true. Music, we, you guys, people don't understand that music, to buy music, you can't just go online and just download sheet music and then just give it to your kids and they play it. You have to actually buy music from composers, which is very expensive. Also, repairs on instruments and just buying new instruments for the kids in order for them to have this opportunity is a very expensive thing. And for music education to be cut first, is very hard to have a solid music education program. Um, there's also many other reasons why people try and cut music even without having the budget cuts. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, but a lot of parents, this is a real issue, is that a lot of parents see um, requiring music in schools to be um, too difficult. They think that learning an instrument would be too difficult on a kid so that he won't be able to focus on his uh, you know actual you know math English education stuff like that so that is one of the other major reasons why they're starting to cut music education out of schools um, all right so now I'm going to tell you why that we need uh, to keep music education strong and to keep it funded in schools uh, Laura Lewis Brown, a professor of uh, English at the University of Maryland, um, has found through research that music actually helps her English students and people who have taken music education do better in English and in all subjects. Um, through research, it's shown that when somebody learns an instrument and learns how to play an instrument, sing, anything like that, that their brain because it's connected through just uh, like pathways, more of them get connected because you have to use different parts of your brain in order to uh, like hear music and be able to like four-way independence through playing and singing music. So that it's, it's, it's a spatial thing in your brain so that when it comes to engineering and math, that will click easier because you're already linked through your brain which will make learning math and other subjects like that much easier. 
also, it helps with the rest of your life because when you play an instrument, you are performing, which it, performing is not an easy thing. Like I'm performing with you guys right now, but I've had a lot of practice going through music education my whole life that I'm not nervous to stand in front of people because I've been doing it my whole life. And it's, it's a good quality to have throughout your life because you're, it's shown that people are more outgoing, they care more about like being out there and being seen by other people in a good way. Um, um, in tests at the University of Kansas also shows that people with music education or good music education programs at their school scored 20% higher on standardized tests than people with poor or no music education programs, which backs up that actually having a good music program at your school can make people smarter. And um, on my last point, um, how to get funds into schools. This is the hard part because the government does not want to give any money to music education programs because they are not important. Um, but there's one thing that we can actually add into schools and it's called an arts education program, which is actually a program where if you add it onto your school, we'll actually cut out of the government's budget and we'll force it into your school through an arts education program. Also, um, private fundraising has become very popular throughout right now. Um, VH1, it's called VH1 Save the Music Foundation. They accept donations throughout uh, America and they it's fed right back into the schools giving them new instruments giving them places to play and it's they've actually donated 49.5 million dollars already and have affected 2.1 million students in getting them new instruments and uh, new music to play and it's actually been very beneficial okay so I've talked to you today about um, music education and why it's so important that we need to keep it in our schools because slowly and slowly it's becoming less important and soon we might not have any music education programs at all, which is sad because we really need music in our schools. Thank you. So what did you think? I thought it was really good. The structure of his speech was um, very well. Uh, he had really good eye contact as well. The only thing I really have to say was he was kind of wrestling his paper a lot, besides reading off of it, which was good. He kept looking down like just to get his quotes off of, but then after that, he'd roll the paper back up and just keep switching hands, or he'd talk with the paper a little bit. OK, how about the content of the speech? Uh, it was good. He had a lot of information about it. He, you can tell that he really knew what he was talking about. Okay. All right, I'm not sure that the visualization of the kids in the bands as losers is a great way to get the audience's <laughs> attention. I think you need something a little bit stronger because ultimately then it sounds like you're saying we need to uh, fund the kids that are all perceived as being losers, and that's not really the way you want to come across. Uh, I think the idea between music and success is a pretty good one and that that would lend itself well to giving you a stronger opening there. You've got a very clear statement of what your goal is. I thought that that worked well and there's a good uh, solid layout of what the secondary points are so that works pretty well also. Um, you know, the quote that you have on the first point talking about how music education not particularly valued 
that felt a little bit awkward. It, I'm not sure that it applies to uh, the school's decision-making process, the budgeting process. It just seems like it's making a general statement about uh, school priorities, and I think you need something a little bit sharper than that. Uh, it's in the background, and it becomes the basis for most of the proof that you have on that first point, but like I said, I, I didn't know that it really made the point the way you think it's making the point. Um, the assumption that music is cut first, for instance, I think that needs to be better documented. It's, it shouldn't be that hard to find examples of music programs that are being cut, and in fact, I think that would add some emotional resonance to the speech as well, because then you'd have uh, illustrations of people who are suffering because of the music cuts, and you could have maybe a story or two about uh, the impact that... <coughs> that had on a school or even on individual students and I think that that would sell your point a little bit more. Um, the, the second point is uh, pretty clearly labeled. I know that you you got to it in a distinct way um, and this is the place where I think most of the research ought to be in the speech it felt a little thin. I did think that you finally got to some research on it. You had some, so you you had a general study at the beginning talking about how it's being connected to success, and then there's a little bit of statistical information there. But I know that there's a lot of research in this field, and it feels like it's just not been planted with as many possible uh, convincing points as. You, you need to, to sell this idea a little bit more. Um, I think you're just taking it too much as a given here and you really need to be a little bit more assertive about those points. Uh, but you did cite the, the sources there and uh, like I said, there were a couple of pieces of information that I thought were pretty useful. Um, when you get to that last point, I wasn't quite clear what the heck is going on with your solution. I don't know how arts education program is different from what the schools fund, if it's a separate program that is privately funded that goes into the schools, then you need to explain that and explain how it manages to uh, get the uh, benefits that the schools need. You have a little bit of information about how much money they've spent, um, but I, I'm, and far be it for me to suggest that $49 million is not a, a generous contribution, it certainly is. But that doesn't sound like it would be able to fund music programs for a whole state, much less across the country. Uh, it, that just seems like a, a small amount relative to the number of music programs that there are, the number of students that might benefit from it. So I don't really get enough context on it, and I still don't know exactly how it, it works. Um, you mentioned the MTV program. Well, I'm glad that they also supply some instruments and uh, give some uh, some uh, financial assistance. But is that ever going to wean this, the music programs off of their dependence on schools? I think that's not really something that we ought to be depending on. So I think your argument needs to focus a little bit more on how the the states and the local governments need to prioritize their own spending and say, you know, we're being short-sighted by cutting these programs when they produce these kinds of benefits, that, that there are other ways that we could save money and that this is the wrong way to be doing that. That seems like the way to go here, not, not turning it over to some private uh, group or some other program that's a little abstract in nature. I think that needs to be sharper. Uh, and, you know, being associated with uh, that a little bit. I, I know that the schools often depend on outside funding for their music programs, despite the fact that it's a music program. So the school maybe hires the instructor, but boy, if you want money for buses or for instruments or any of those kinds of things, you got to find it someplace else. And there's that just seems like that's some, there's something wrong with that. They don't have the football team doing fundraising to pay for the football field uh, they don't have the um, debate team doing fundraising to uh, find index cards or get buses to go to the tournaments and that sort of thing. So why is it that the the band or the orchestra has to do fundraising in order to find money to buy the equipment that they need for the instruction that they're getting? It just seems like there's a, a stronger argument to be made there. All right. Thank you.